Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video we're going to go over a simple example of just adding forces. Now here we have a force Q and a force P acting on this little screw thing um, at their respective angles and their respective magnitude forces. And what we're asked to find is the resultant magnitude and the resultant Cartesian form of the um, resultant vector. And so this is a pretty straightforward example, but I thought I'd go over it. Um, <clears throat> very in detail. So what we want to do, we can't just add these forces by saying 60 plus 40 is 100 because they're at different angles. We have to add up their x components that go in the same direction and then add up their y components that all go in the same direction. So of course first we have to find their x components and find their y components. So we just do that by taking the sum of all the x components of these two vectors and so we see that we have P is 40, so we have 40 newtons times, we want the X component, so that's the cosine of this angle, because cosine this way, and the sine is the perpendicular. So we take the cosine of 20 degrees, and so that's the X component of P. So I guess I'll make this a little labeled. P of X is this thing right here, and then we're also going to add um, the Q component, or the x component of q, so that's 60 times, now this is 25 plus 20, so that just comes to 45, so we're taking the cosine because we want this direction, so that's the cosine of 40 degrees, and put a little multiplication symbol in there, and when you do the math in the calculator, you'll end up getting that the sum of the force in the x direction comes to 80 newtons. <clears throat> now we just do the same thing for the y. So. Again, we'll start with P, so we're just going to have 40 newtons, and this time we want the vertical direction. So we're going to take the sine of 20 degrees, and so that's the Y component of P. And actually, let me go back and make sure I have everything nice and... Sorry, this marker is a little bad. And right here, is the Y component of P. And then now we're just going to add the Y component of Q, which is 60 times the sine of its respective angle, and from the um, x-axis, of course, sine of 45 degrees, and when you do the math out in the calculator, it comes out to about 56 newtons. I'm just rounding these to two significant figures to make it easier. And that's a y. Sorry, this marker is a little too fat, but this this is this is q of y. All right, so now we have the um, resultant x component and the resultant y component. So now we can do is we can write this in Cartesian form because we have the x and the y and hopefully you remember that so f resultant this is going to be a vector and we have positive 80 newtons in the i hat direction plus 56 newtons in the j hat direction and I like making it clear that all of these are newtons and so this is one of our answers. This is the, I think I just drew in my water bottle, this is the Cartesian form. Sorry, that marker is a little too stubby. And so now we want to find the um, magnitude, so we can do a little cross out through that. The magnitude is just, to write it down first, this is, I'm sure you know this already, but this is one of the possible symbols you can do for magnitude. You can also just write f of r with no vector symbol. And so that, using the Pythagorean theorem, you take 80 squared, 56 squared. So this is just the uh, x component of the 4 squared plus the y component of the 4 squared. Just like solving a triangle, which it is if you add the vectors um, pictorially. And once you do the math with this, you'll find out that it's 98 newtons. And this is our other answer. So this is going to be the magnitude. And that's it. That's this whole problem. And so just to kind of give you a little visualization of this, um, to, to give you why this is the case. So we have 80 newtons as our x component of this vector, right? So we're going to draw this this length, and we're going to call this, uh, we'll just call it f of x, f sub x, so the uh, resultant force in the x direction. 
And then, so that's about 80 newtons, and then just to draw the um, 56 newtons going horizontally, uh, sorry, vertically, um, slightly smaller than 80. So this is going to be f of y, I guess I'll label these 80 newtons equals 56 newtons up here. And then, so basically the resultant force is just this, this guy right here. And what is this equal to? We, this is a 90 degree angle. And just using basic geometry, you can figure out what this is. You could, I guess you could probably do this with um, other ways, but this is the easiest way. So since it's just a triangle, this is basically um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know a squared, we know p squared, we're trying to find c. So then um, this guy right here is c is equal to, so we take the square root of both sides, a squared plus b squared, and then we just plug in our numbers and that gives you that. So that's why that works, just in case anyone was wondering. Um, just to summarize everything, we had two forces, um, just acting on a singular point, going different angles. Oh, we got that. Um, we broke them up into their uh, horizontal components and added them up. We broke them into their vertical components and added them up. We wrote it in Cartesian form, which is just vector notation. So this is the uh, direction in the x-axis. This is the direction in the y-axis. Newton, so that's the Cartesian form. And then by using geometry or trig, whichever, um, you found out <clears throat> the basically the hypotenuse of summing these vectors, which is the magnitude of the vector. And that came out to 98 Newtons. And that's basically it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you. And subscribe if you want more. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.